All right, call this meeting to order at 6.34 p.m. In accordance with Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, signed by Governor Baker on June 16, 2021, suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law Chapter 30A, this meeting of the North Reading School Committee is being conducted with some remote participation. While in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and a quorum of the school committee will be in person, this meeting is concurrently being presented through a Google Meet and or by a live broadcast by NORCAM to allow the public and any school committee members who cannot attend to participate. I will also point out in lieu of last meeting that if anybody is planning on taping or live streaming, please let us know. And if anybody, the only exception to that is if you're taping your kid when the bachelor comes in, I give you, I grant permission for that today. So we're gonna begin with public comment, but we're gonna do it slightly different. We're gonna have public comment till about 6.30. Or sorry, till about seven o'clock. Then we're gonna pause because we have the batch elder kids coming down here. I don't want to keep them up too late, so we'll do six thirty to seven for public comment. We'll do the student report. Then we'll bring the batch elder kids down. Then we'll resume public comment after that if there's comments beyond thirty minutes. So, and again for public comment, if you have any comment, please ask to be recognized. Keep your comments to three minutes and identify yourself where you live in your name. Any comments from the public? You're not, Mr. DePatty, go ahead, wait. You wanna give um, a remote or a, a... Yeah. <clears throat> you got a mic, Patrick? <clears throat> Drew DePatty, 6 Flint Street. Tonight I'm speaking to shed light on curriculum being taught in the North Reading public schools that I think will be a surprise to most residents of North Reading. In June of last year, in his year-end address, Dr. Daly said the following when speaking about equity. We are not ready to jump right out with the 1619 curriculum or the blue-eyed, brown-eyed lessons tomorrow. In his address entitled A Strategy for the Future, Dr. Daly said the following when speaking about diversity, equity, and the inclusion program, quote, the 1619 curriculum says U.S. history needs to be viewed through the lens of slavery just to be clear, that is not a curriculum we are teaching in our schools, end quote. That was just under 11 months ago. I'm glad Dr. Daly said the schools are not teaching this divisive 1619 disinformation as this is purely an activist national, national political movement disguised as U.S. history. Within the last 30 days, two concerned students have approached me with evidence of this extreme 1619 curricula making its way into the schools. Up until hearing me speak at previous school board meetings, these students felt they did not have anyone safe to turn to to express their concerns. They were worried that they may face retaliation from teachers or administrators or even get bullied by other students. I received their permission to speak about this topic tonight. I have with me five copies of the assignment, which was inspired by the 1619 project, um, as it says right on the document. I have one copy for each of the school committee members. I have two requests to the school board. Number one, request that Dr. Daly investigate this and provide a written report to the school committee by the next scheduled meeting and then share it with the public at that meeting. And number two, set up an anonymous submission process by which other concerned students, teachers, or parents who fear punitive backlash can directly communicate with the school board. There are a few more details that I did not get permission from the students to broadcast at this meeting that, I, that will aid in the investigation, but I will relay that information to Chairman Buckley in a private conversation. My phone number is on um, Chairman Buckley's copy of the evidence. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> yeah, Dr. Daly, go ahead. Just to make it clear, anyone who ever has a concern about any curriculum that's being taught in lessons, I would recommend you first bring that up with the classroom teacher. The teacher always understands the context, understands where it's being taught. Second, you should address it with the principal if you need assistance with that. And then from there, thank you. you know, there are always the avenue to, um, to reach out to the superintendent of the school committee with uh, the email. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? Mr. Clean? Uh, okay. <coughs> Trying to check. Mr. McGowan, can you write? So, Kathleen Roy, do you have a comment or question or thought?
I don't see hands up. No. Nope. Okay. That was a hearing issue. Yeah. They can't hear in the room. We should fix that. Where are we getting the uh, mic from? Can you take this back. This mic. Yeah. Try. <clears throat> That's what I mean, the, the, the laptop. Okay, do you want to check? Um, the, um, is the volume down on the, on the laptop? Okay, check an audio visual. Why don't you mute that one, I guess, and I just use yours back there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mute the finish one of these. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that that echo here too. <laughs> Is it coming from the owl or from the... Gianna, can you hear us now? Gianna, can you hear us now? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay. So was there, were there any hands raised on the meet now? We good? I don't believe so. Okay. Any comments in the room for public comment? Yes, you can pass the uh, mic down, please. Hi, my name is Rebecca Griffin. I live at Fort Emerson, and I apologize. This is my first school committee meeting. Um, I just wanted to come and say thank you for all of your work, and thank you, Dr. Daly. Um, I moved to this town because of the schools, like most people, and you all have far exceeded my expectations, and I appreciate you combating things that are coming up, and I also appreciate being transparent about um, the agendas that have come into question. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other thoughts? <coughs> if not, go ahead. <coughs> it's really heavy. Thank you. And remember, the mic is for NORCAM, so that's not for the audio in here. All right. <laughs> no, it sounds good. Out. That's for NORCAM to hear from home. So. Perfect. Okay. Uh, my name is Steve Sigmund, um, 418 Park Street uh, in, in North Reading. Um, so I, I, really, I, I just really want to respond to all of the speakers that have, um, over the past few weeks, months, and now even today, who... Uh, who think that parents are lacking sufficient control over what is taught in our schools. I, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of the purpose of a child's guaranteed right to a free public education. The purpose of a public education in a public school is to teach kids not what parents just want them to be taught. It's to teach them what society needs them to know. If parents are opposed to public education, then you have the option to send your kid to a private school or you can even homeschool. A public education doesn't just include reading, writing, math, the arts, science. Society needs the next generation to have a complete and uncensored understanding of history, real history, warts and all. Without a full understanding of history in the actual context, we are doomed to repeat the mistakes of our past, and it does us no service to pretend that there aren't any. Like it or not, our children are living in the world as it is, not as we want it to pretend it is. We need kids to understand the huge societal importance of diversity, equity, inclusion, and the incredible importance empathy plays in being a productive member of this society. The client of the public school is not just the child, not just the parent, but the community. It's the public. 
Also, for the record, our school libraries are not filled with X-rated or inappropriate material, as so many want you to believe. Transparency for parents with respect to the school curriculum, CRT, library materials, is a manufactured crisis that nicely fits with some incredibly cynical political narratives. Our librarians are hardworking, dedicated public servants who are ensuring our kids have access to age-appropriate information that they need to supplement their education. It's vital that kids have access to books from authors from a wide range of backgrounds with diverse opinions and many points of view. The only way we can hope to maintain an informed society is to ensure the next generation of adults have the tools, the knowledge, and the context they need to work together in a diverse community. I believe the vast majority of us in this town do care and do respect and recognize the valuable and important and critical work that you guys, the North Reading School Committee, does voluntarily to support our community and our public school system, as evidenced by the non stop constant barrage of negative public commentary from extremely vocal, but nonetheless, a very tiny minority. Most of us realize that what you guys do obviously seems like a thankless job. I mean, I I've watched you harassed, threaten, and even laugh a laughably baseless attempt to sue you based on a QAnon theory that you could get, that you can bury public servants in legal bogus paperwork. It's absolutely infuriating. And it really says something that out-of-towners need to come and, uh, in order to amplify the message. So I just want to say, despite all of that, despite all the misinformation and nonsense, you guys have carried on. When we, and we have four candidates still on the ballot tomorrow to vie for a position on this very board. And I think that says a lot about the true dedication for public education in North Reading. And for that, I thank all of you. I thank the remaining candidates uh, for school board tomorrow. And please, everyone, please go out and vote tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Yeah, we pass it back, Steve. Thank you. Hi, my name is Noah Spicer, uh, resident 13 Swan Pond Road. Um, I'm a student, or a former student, an alum of North Reading Public Schools. Uh, I'm a townie by birth. I am a historian by education, and I'm an educator by profession right now. And I could take this time to take on arguments about critical race theory, the 1619 Project, which, by the way, is a poetry project, um, or to talk about DEI and other such matters, but that is not the point of meetings like this. The point of meetings like this is to give the opportunity for the institutions of the education of our youth in this town to interact with the population, with the community, and that's to build a system of trust. That's what North Reading has been built on for a very long time. That's what we still have been able to maintain, even as towns around us have grown and have fought in little political squabbles. And I've worked in some of those political squabbles in other towns, and I've seen that. North Reading has managed to stay above that and stay above and past that. And we have managed to maintain that trust when people are invited outside of this town to support political campaigns and push ideological theories, that trust is breached and it damages what we have in this town. I am not here to argue in favor of any political theories, any curriculum, to support any candidates for election, simply to offer a plea to our elected officials, but also just the community who's always welcome to come here, that this is what it's about. It's about building trust and keeping the line of communication open. And when we use it as a platform to do other things, it hurts this town and it hurts what I grew up experiencing and it really makes me worried for what I'd like my kids to someday experience in this town. And I don't know if I'll be able to commit to that if we see this town go the way other towns around us have and sacrifice our trust in one another 
for political ideologies. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Yes. Can I wait? Wait for the bike, please. Right here. There you go. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Janine Largent, 11 Hillside Road. I'm not prepared. I wasn't prepared to make a statement, but listening to the last couple of comments, um, as a citizen, first of all, I find it insulting that we use a narrative to say someone's a QAnoner just because they question why all of a sudden ideologies are permeating every single thing we do. We know that the Department of Education, through DESE, <laughs> bribing us with funding, has us suddenly looking at things like diversity, equity, inclusion, all great things, I might add, social, emotional, learning, also great things, uh, comprehensive sex ed, um, I'm a little questionable on that. Uh, I don't know how comprehensive, and as a co-administrator of um, a Mass Family Institute group on that, I can tell you there may not be pornography here, but it is included in a lot of the packages from which comprehensive sex ed compile, and these things tend to be a progressive, if you know what I mean. And so to sit here and say that this is not the forum is um, absolutely shocking to me because I know this is about the future. This is about our children. It's about their mental health, their physical health, and our unity. Um, and as you can see, we are not divided by any particular ethnicity or culture. I personally have not experienced um, a situation in North Reading where I felt that we were an um, exclusionary or bullying. And so, yeah, I do question these do. And yes, I'm going to use the, another term, but this looks a whole lot like cultural Marxism. All of what's happening looks like a whole lot of what's happened in China and Beijing and places like that. We are this close to a digital credit score. Uh, we, and if that stuff doesn't, if all of you aren't even questioning any of this, then I question your intellect. Thank you. Any other thoughts? <clears throat> yeah, can you pass it back, please? Hi, my name's Allie Papavasilio. I live at 54 Spruce Road. My husband is Chris Papavasilio, who is on the school committee. I just want to thank Chris and Janine for your years of service. I know that tonight is your last meeting. Um, and I know that at least for our family, it has been a huge sacrifice. We have two very young children um, who, you know, miss their dad Mondays. Um, so on a more local note, um, from other points, I just want to say thank you from our little family um, that you've been able to do this. And I, I appreciate your service. and. Um, I hope that the next people who step into your shoes treat it with the type of um, dignity that you have in very undignified circumstances. Thank you, Allie. <laughs> I do assure you we, we will recognize them a little bit later tonight, too. So. <laughs> um, any other thoughts? A couple more people, and then if not, we can move on to the student report. Okay, I think we'll move on to the student report. Do you want to grab the uh, mic back, Dr. Daly? I have one real quick. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> My name's Luke Antolini. I'm a, I'm a, a, a where, father. Where do you live, sir? What's up? Where do you live? What's your address? Uh, 10 Deer Run Drive. Thank you. North Reading. Uh, I am the father of a, f a fourth grader and a first grader. About two months ago, I was driving my son to hockey practice, asking him how his day went at school, um, you know, just you know, catching up with them. And he said, today we learned that cops hate black people. We're reading a book. And I'm like, literally almost drove off the road. I'm like, what? He, I'm like, what's the, uh, what's the name of the book? And he said, it's uh, Front Desk. 
and uh, you know, obviously, it's a fourth grade kid, so you gotta, you know, you can't exactly take his word for it. So I did get the book. I read it. It wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be in terms of the actual uh, book as a whole, but there were parts of it where they made some statements and they never really corrected them at the end. Um, I have a couple of snippets real quick, and I may be wrong. I may be out, you know, out there in terms of whether or not it's the right thing to be teaching a fourth grader, but um, there is one part <clears throat> where they're rent, uh, they're renting some hotel room to some uh, to some patrons, and um, the owner of the hotel uh, told the the clerk at the front desk not to rent to bad people. Um, so she ended up renting a room to a black person. All right. So there was a car. Uh, there was a car. Th uh, there was a car that was stolen around the block, and the person came in. And the owner was like, I know that the black person did, all right? So there's a couple of snippets here that I'll just read just to get to the point. Wait a minute, she's black, he yelled. I thought I told you not to rent to bad people. And my throat went dry. I could hear the sound of my breathing hard and fast. You said bad people, not black people. Any idiot knows black people are dangerous, Miss Xiao said. And then a couple of pages later, they, uh, uh, they have the police come and interrogate you know, a couple of the people from the hotel. And there's a part there where I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was reading it, and my, my jaw dropped, all right? And, and, and uh, this is a very, very short paragraph, I promise. I sat with my nose pressed up against the window, watching police interrogate Hank. Several times I ran outside, only to be escorted back in. See, the police know I'm right, Mr. Yao said. So Mr. Yao is the owner of the hotel. Uh, 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 taking the interrogation of Hank as evidence that his theory about black people was valid. He was wrong. The only thing it proved was that police were just like him. I counted the minutes until he and his racist thoughts would finally leave. Surprisingly, the person who remained most calm throughout the incident was Mr. Lorenz. It sounded like he had our car insurance and, and he figured out he could get the money back that way. So my point is, and they never, and then you know, later on in the book, I was like hoping that they uh, come back and correct the statement about uh, police, um, but they didn't. They had a very, very uh, brief sentence later on in the book, not really correcting that statement. And um, I don't know, it's just a weird, it's a weird situation that we're in right now. I, I know everything's really hyper uh, politicized these days. I get it, but it's a slippery slope that I think we're going down and I, I think if we don't nip it in the bud, I think it's going to just be um, pretty bad if we just keep going down this route in terms of what we're trying to teach our fourth grade children. Uh, and so I'm starting to ask my first grader, like, what books are you reading? Just so I can kind of see what they're learning in class, because unless we ask and find out what they're reading, um, we, we don't really know what's going on in these classrooms, which is kind of scary. Thank you, sir. Any other Thoughts, comments? Okay. <clears throat> Hearing none, I think we're going to move on to the student report. Gian, I believe we have you on tonight to give our student report. And Mr. Maloney, do you want to go get the, the batch of other kids too for afterwards? <clears throat> Hang on, Gianna, you're Hang not Gianna. coming through. Oop. Um, how about now? Dr. Daly, is that because you muted the speakers in here? Yeah, you can hear it through here. Okay. Yep. Can you hear it? Go ahead. Go ahead, Jana. Awesome. Uh, so, first I'm going to start off with. Well, thank you for having me. I said that before you could hear me. But I'm going to start off with some academic matters. So, the AP testing window has officially begun, and that is going to be two weeks of testing for the AP classes that the high school offers, um, that it's mostly two tests a day. And the Dollars for Scholars application was due in late April and local scholarships have begun to roll out from the guidance office. Uh, the seniors will, the grades will be finalized on May 18th to determine if they are eligible to opt out of the final. 
you need a 93% average or higher in order to do that. And then uh, academic awards night invitations have been sent out and the spring student recognition night will be on May 18th. Um, National Honor Society induction is this Thursday and that will be combined with the juniors and the seniors because the seniors have didn't have the chance to have an in-person one due to COVID last year. And then moving on to some fine arts, the choral and band students returned home safely from their Disney trip last night. And the Notorious, which is the high school acapella group, placed third at the international acapella finals in New York two weeks ago. Lucy Wagner and Colin Chin won a special award for best arrangement. And Lucy Wagner was also chosen to have a solo in the final group number, which included every every school and also was written by the director and writer of the Pentatonics. Um, Athletic Matters, Cody Canalonga was welcome to the NBCA all academic team recently. Um, Juliana Lagore broke the school record for hurdles this past weekend. John Jennings was chosen as the finalist for the Massachusetts High School, sorry, <laughs> the Massachusetts High School Football Coaches Association Leadership Scholarship, which is very exciting. Um, the boys baseball team just returned from their tournament in Cooperstown where they were very successful. And track won both of their meets this weekend, both the girls and the boys team. Um, some more stuff that doesn't necessarily fall in any category. The Ecuador kids came home safely. They had a blast led by the international uh, trip advisors and Social Activism Club recently had quick informational sessions on the importance of voting in local elections and specifically the upcoming school committee election where they went power block to power block and gave a quick like recap on how to register to vote why it's important to vote and that as young citizens, our voice matters in elections. And then the NEMAS Spring Conference was last week and Annie Cooperstein was a little... Oh. No. We lost her. Yeah, we, Gianna, we lost board. you. Oops, there we go. Council go ahead. State Board. And May 1st was National Decision Day for seniors. So most of us chose what we will do in the next chapter of our lives. And as for my student work, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some review games that we've been playing in Mr. Ostig's class because he's been getting very creative with some of our AP review. We had our AP Gov test this morning and he, last week we played Scotus Spoons, where if you're familiar with the game Spoons, there's one less spoon in the middle than there are people, and it's kind of like musical chairs. So once you have like a match, you have to reach for the spoon. And it was with, you had to get a full set for your Supreme Court case. So you needed the name of the case, the decision, and um, a fun fact about the case, so. That was my student work. <laughs> Excellent, Gianna. So I know everybody wants to ask first. Yep. Did you make a decision yet? <laughs> yes, I did. In the fall, I will be attending um, the Commonwealth Honors College at UMass Amherst. Very nice. Congrats. Congratulations, and I know that Notorious is also you know, important to you and, you know, you're the president of Maskers, I believe, right? So you're very connected with them. Um, any other comments or thoughts from the committee, the group? Oh, I don't want to push back our... No? <laughs> okay. 
No, excellent report as always, yep. Gianna. Are we gonna are we gonna see you again this season, this year, or, or is this your last meeting? Do you know? I think this one might be my last. Well, I just want to thank you for your for your help and the committee the last few years. I know that you were one of the people that was here, you know, during COVID as well, and so it's been, you know, wonderful to have you. And so we wish you all the best in your uh, your college career. And so. Congratulations and thank you so much for helping. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Okay. We are welcoming in the Batchelder School. Looks like we're taking over. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> we are. I'm, I'm hoping this works. Take a quick break. Oh. We'll wait for Mr. Maloney, everybody, to get ready here. Hello, Mr. Maloney. How are we doing this evening? Thank you for the invitation. This is the best part. I know. Wow. Wish we had 26 elementary schools. <laughs> 26 <laughs> elementary schools. I'm glad we don't have I don't think that's a man as many people then. <laughs> Let's see how they set up. <clears throat> I know. Well, there is one up there, but that doesn't help us. Yeah, and they turn around like this and see the best. Yeah. We good? Yes, go ahead. We're waiting for you, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Maloney, and I'm honored uh, to be here tonight uh, for the first time in person. I know we've done this before virtually, but I'm honored to be here tonight and excited as the principal of the Batchelder School. Um, I'd like to thank you all for the, for the invitation this evening to showcase uh, just a little snapshot of, of some of the great work that, that goes on each and every day at the Batchelder School. It's, um, I'm, I'm truly amazed uh, each and every day of the work that goes on in, in classrooms. I, I try to, to make it into classrooms every day to see what's going on. And sometimes it's for a few minutes. Sometimes, like on Friday, it was for an hour and a half um, in, in a lesson being run in, in a first grade classroom. But the level of professionalism is, is consistent and, and present each and every day. Our, our young students, our young minds are fortunate to have such great adults working with them and, and for them each and every day. I'm excited for you tonight school committee members and parents to see the, the, the projects, uh, the, the academic piece, um, and also the social emotional piece that you know, we try to educate the, the whole student. And I think it's a good balance tonight of, of that academic piece and, and that, that social emotional piece that is so important, those soft skills that, that we're teaching our young students. Um, and before I forget, as it's, it's Teacher Appreciation Week, uh, today's the first day of Teacher Appreciation Week, I'd like to extend my deep and sincere appreciation for all the educators, all the teachers, all the staff, custodians, school committee members, superintendents, assistant superintendents, uh, lunch ladies, everybody who work with, with our students. It, it, you know, it's, it's Teacher Appreciation Week, but it really should be School Appreciation Week because the work that goes on each and every day in classrooms, and I've had the experience for a long time at the middle school and, and now at the elementary school. It, it truly is amazing, and I know that our, our high school friends are, are sending them off into the, the big wide world, very well prepared. I know you spoke eloquently t tonight, and you know, you're, you're one of ours, and um, you know, we're, we're proud of you and, and the work that you're doing. So you know, it, it's great to see them as, as six-year-olds. You know, we sent out the kindergarten screening letter today, and um, you know, and then we have our, our graduates who come back and contribute to our, our community. So, I'm not going to say much more. I'm basically going to do what I've been doing for the last 16 months down at the badge. I just kind of get out of the way and, and try not to mess it up because <laughs> our teachers and our students do such a fabulous job. It really is. When I say I'm amazed each and every day, I truly am because the work that they do is, is, is fantastic. And um, I'm really excited for you to see these projects. So, like I said, we have two presentations tonight, an academic presentation and a social emotional you know, learning piece and, and some of the work that we've been doing um, consistently on a, a weekly basis to you know, set our students up for success. So 
I'm going to introduce, uh, we have one, two, four, five, six teachers, four, five classroom teachers, a school psychologist, and a digital learning specialist here today. So we have <laughs> Mrs. Lindsay, who is our digital learning specialist. She's making sure that all the tech is, is running well. Uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick is here. Mrs. Johnson is here. Ms. Hewitt. Ms. DiDonato. And is Ms. Bythro here? Yeah. No, she is not. OK. And Ms. Petrie's in the corner. Sometimes we put Ms. Petrie in the corner. We say, don't put Ms. <laughs> and then we have our students. And I hope I get everyone right here. James Rainey and Steven Sfikas, who are from Ms. Hewitt's class. We have Madison Cost and Ryan Ward from Ms. Fitzpatrick's class. Consuelo Anderson, Matthew Thorpe, and Phoebe McEntee from Mrs. Johnson's class, and Vincenzo Amara and Emmy, Emery Liberto from Ms. Bythrow's class. And for our social emotional piece, we have, they're all student council members, Ms. Petrie. We have four of our student council members uh, with their shirts on, which I love. We have Charlie Chimpoli, Abby Curtin, Barrett Denninger, and Julia Scott. So you'll hear a lot more from them and probably do it much better than I. Uh, so, I'm, like I said, I'm just going to get out of the way and, and let, the, let the experts do the work. Ms. Hewitt? Give it a try. So we have a video here from the creators of Making Me Pee and different, er, and it's a video on different things you can make and why they made the Making Me Pee. Left hook. 
When you're ready for more, flip the Makey Makey over and you've got more keyboard keys and support for the mouse. You can even use the board like an Arduino when you are ready. No programming, no breadboarding. You don't even have to install software. Just plug it in USB. Order your Makey Makey today and start changing how the world works. <laughs> Excellent job, James. Hi, my name is Steven Sweetis. We picked the Statue of Liberty as our topic because in class we were reading a story about New York and the Statue of Liberty. We thought that it would be a cool and interesting subject to teach you our first grade buddies. We studied and researched the history of the statue. We enjoyed finding the pictures and making the circuitry. The most challenging part was making the recording sound good. Good job, Steven. Just finished learning about how Earth and its landforms, or geosphere, 
are always moving and changing. We decided to display the three processes of reverend, movement, and deposition. And we knew this information well enough to teach us your first grade ones. Now, we hope to teach it to you. Hi, my name is Phoebe. We decided to divide our board into three parts and explain what each word meant. We used cardboard, construction paper, cotton balls, pom-poms, duct tape, tin foil, and markers. Hope you enjoy our project. We owe Emily and Vincenzo. This is the Makey Makey project we completed in digital law. We chose Mexico and Canada because we got to study them in social studies using a hyperdoc let us work at our own pace and decide the best way for us to learn the material. Another reason why we chose this topic is because it was really fascinating to learn about the countries we share North America with. My name is Bruce and Kuhn because we who isn't interested in these two topics. Emory and I explored different materials in our makerspace to see which one would conduct electricity and complete the circuit for us. Believe it or not, Play-Doh worked, but tinfoil was the best. We then needed to explain the information about Can Mexico and Canada in a way that our first grade buddies would understand. It is important to know who your audience is. We were able to use information that we had already learned and we had already learned and shared it with our buddies using a new technology. The Sunsi said should definitely do this project with the next year's fourth graders. <laughs> so now, we invite the school committee and administration to come out and try our projects. <laughs> <laughs> She's among these four boards, the Statue of Liberty, Pangea, the Rock Cycle, and our North American neighbors. What do you want, guys? Uh, we, I'm going straight for erosion. <laughs> erosion? Yeah. The rock, okay. the rock cycle. The rock cycle? <laughs> are we doing it in groups? Yeah. Are we? You guys can spread out. Spread out? Spread out, yeah. Okay. Four boards. I was called stupid earlier today. Now we're going to prove it. So. <laughs> no, I wasn't doing that. <laughs>
I don't want you to be here all night, Rich. Ready? 
putting money in the bathroom. Right. Well, how can we wait? Oh, you can go right now. We'll start to wind this down and we'll get our next group up here to present. Okay. Because there's the SEL thing, too. Okay. So I was saying, I'm not sure who, but what I really enjoyed about these projects was the multidisciplinary uh, aspect to it, where it's that you know good old-fashioned research, book work. You know they have to learn about the Statue of Liberty and erosion, um, and then put it in a, a voice where their first grade buddies could understand, and, and the fourth graders could teach the younger students a lesson. And then the technology piece. It's you know it's that I think. Uh, Mr. Buckley, I think you made the comment last week where you liked that, that poster and, you know, so we're, we're blending that old school and, and new school with the technology and, um, you know, all disciplines here in the, you know, the, the circuitry and the computers and, and, you know, so I just want to thank our, our fourth graders for presenting tonight, you know, Ms. Lindsay for coordinating the, the digital piece and the classroom teachers for coordinating the, the, the project. And now I'd like to ask Mrs. DiDonato and Ms. Peachy to come up to just present our next little snippet here uh, about some of our social emotional learning initiatives that we've uh, undertaken this year. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say the C word, um, but I think this, this, piece, this piece is really helping us transition back into full time learning and, and getting kids, um, you know, that, those soft skills that, that they really need in, in with their relationships with adults and, and students. So, Mrs. DiDonato and Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Christina Petrie and I am the school psychologist at the Bachelor School. We are so excited to be here with you tonight to share a few of the new initiatives and projects that we've been working on this year. Um, good evening, my name is Nicole DiDonato and I am a third grade teacher at the Bachelor School. Um, and additionally, I am a social emotional learning mentor for the district. Um, it's a privilege to work with Christina and collaborate on how to best meet the social emotional needs of our student body. So the Zones of Regulation is a tool that explicitly teaches our students important social emotional learning skills, such as identifying and managing feelings, or as I like to say it, deal with the feel. So introducing <laughs> these lessons as whole school <coughs> concepts has been beneficial for our batch community to use it as a common language. At different times throughout their day, kids are able to use a variety of tools to anonymously indicate what zone they're in. This acts as a really great mood meter for the whole class and gives valuable insight to staff. Many teachers and specialists have also implemented coping toolboxes to complement these check-ins. And uh, it helps, excuse me, and teach students how to deal with the field. As part of this initiative, we would like to recognize the efforts of our school adjustment counselor, our occupational therapist, teachers, and all support staff. And as a classroom teacher, um, the zones of regulation assist me in knowing where my students are emotionally prior to beginning our learning for the day. For example, if a student's in the blue, uh, due to a disagreement with a friend on the bus, that student's readiness to learn can dip dramatically. This emotional state can affect our listening skills, comprehension skills, uh, reasoning skills, reducing their ability to learn during lessons and participate in class. If I see a student who has chosen blue uh, for their zone in the morning, perhaps we have a quick conversation about what's troubling them, choose a coping skill uh, to help that student get ready to get through the day. Um, and all of these things uh, can help get students to a better place and get ready to learn. So in addition to the, addition to the zones of regulation, we have also rolled out a Monday mindful moment. Each Monday when students arrive at school, they are welcomed into their classroom and shown a short clip created by different staff members throughout our building. Each video includes a mindful moment as an opportunity for all to be still, to breathe, and to prepare to learn. Our videos end with a social emotional learning goal for students to work towards and we encourage kids to reflect on their progress throughout the week. So we invite you to take a peek at our clip. Right here. 
Karen? That's fine. Monday mindful moment didn't get me, right? This was a particularly tough Monday. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be the video. We appreciate everyone's whole yeah, body. You're getting it from the, yeah. from the computer. You can hear so that. So the audience working. Might be the settings in Google itself. Should I try stopping and sharing? Let's try. Oh. Here we go. Yeah. Take We would like to start each week with a few minutes to get our minds and bodies ready for being at school. Let's begin. Sit up tall. Take a deep breath in. Let it all the way up. Hold your body really still and listen. It's really important to try to make connections with people you don't normally connect. So this week, your goal is to try to make some connections with friends or teachers or family members or anyone you're going to see this week and think about making a connection with that person. Maybe you have something in common because you both got a new pet or maybe you both like the same food. So I want you to think this week about using that sign and it can be really subtle and make connections with people that you haven't made before. Our goal for this week is going to be first time listening. So when you are in your classroom, whether you're in first grade or third grade or all the way up in fifth grade, teachers are going to give you directions. And this week we want you to listen to that direction and then follow it on the first time. So what are some ways that we can be a first time listener? The first is to pay attention to who's speaking. Your teacher is going to give you directions. Other adults are going to give you directions to try and help you and so that we can complete our task. The boy and his friends slowly felt less alone with the feelings that lived deep inside them. Emotions might feel big and scary sometimes, but that is no reason to hide them. So that was the boy with big, big feelings. So this week, our goal is going to be how do we deal with the feel? So it's okay to have those big emotions and feel all those big things, whether they're happy, sad, frustrating, but it's what do we do with them? So if we're feeling those big feelings, it's okay to talk to an adult. It's okay to take those deep breaths, find a strategy that works for you. Uh, so how are you feeling today? Maybe you're feeling pretty happy. Can I see everyone? Maybe you're feeling a little grumpy. Let me see your grumpy face. Maybe you're feeling really grumpy. <laughs> Maybe you're even a little bit angry. And maybe you might be a little bit sad today, a little bit down today. That's okay. What I want us to do is we're going to take a breath. We're going to imagine all those bad, negative feelings leaving our body. Okay? So let's, let's just try that together. Can we breathe in through our nose? We're going to blow those bad feelings away. Ready? When you're looking at me, I know you're thinking of me. Think with your eyes and say. So this is the story called Thinking with Your Eyes. Thank you so much, Ms. Petri, for lending me your book so I can read it and think about how I can think with my eyes. So this week, I'm going to use my eyes as arrows and I'm going to think about my friends and think how they are looking. And maybe, maybe they don't look too happy. And maybe I can think about ways that I can make them happier. Maybe you don't have anything out on your desk and you look around, you think with your eyes at all your friends around you and you look to see what they're doing. And I bet if you think with your eyes this week, you're going to be a very successful bulldog. <laughs> uh, well, as a classroom teacher, <coughs> Um, starting off the week with these mindful moments um, helps us all get ready for school, and we all need that big deep breath on every morning. Um, so goal setting two helps us stay focused on important skills we need to do our best and be our best selves. But don't take our word for it. We brought along some of the Baptist finest to share how these initiatives have helped them. Hello, I'm Vera Tenshire. I like having the zones of regulation in my classroom because it helps me see where I am in the day 
and stop to think how I'm doing. When we choose our zone, it's anonymous. But I know my teacher is watching out for us. She knows if we are ready to learn, and if we aren't, she can help. Hi, I'm Abby Curtin. When choosing a zone, when choosing a zone each day, we are expressing ourselves, and I like that. Sometimes we have a whole class conversation on how everyone is doing and why. Then we talk about what is going to help us get ready to learn to get more in the green. Hi, I'm Julia Scott. When it comes to the Monday Mindful Moment, it's a nice way to start the week. The breathing, the breathing exercises help me feel less stressed and ready to start the day. Then our teacher writes down our goal for the week. It's a nice reminder to look up and know what we are all trying to work on together. Hi, I'm Charlie Jeff Foley. I agree with you, Julia. It's also nice to see and hear from teachers we don't normally get to see. It mixes us up. It's nice to hear what learning strategies they have chosen for us to work on. I look forward to it. And it is an honor to also be the Bachelor School Student Council's leader. So members from the fourth and fifth grade um, attend regular meetings throughout the school year. So I have loved watching the kids show their creativity and work together, all with the same goal in mind to make and create a positive impact. We enjoy student council because we love helping people. We help our school and community with different activities and projects. I love reading to the kindergartners, first and second graders for literacy notes. We even got to be the teachers and help the kids with their with a project. I liked it when we made a banner for Rule of Kindness Day because the whole school got involved. Every student wrote their name on a piece of confetti so we could throw kindness like confetti. Something that was very meaningful to me and the rest of the council is when we worked with the giving tree to fill eight children's wish lists for Christmas. We all went to Walmart to shop for them. It was an ama it was amazing to see what kids asked for and taught us a lot, a lot about giving back and being thankful. Student Council has definitely helped us all learn some important lessons. Nice job, ladies. <coughs> Hi. So that is, is our presentation for the evening. And you know, just to speak a little bit about the, the Monday Morning Mindful Minute, it, it's a good way to, to start the week off as a, as a community, as an entire school. And something that we didn't mention, on Fridays, on Friday mornings, we have check-ins on, on how we did with our goals for, for the week. So students are able to share with teachers on how they did with the goal, were there any moments where they might have, you know, thought with their eyes or, or took a moment or helped someone. So it's, it's a good way to start the week and to end the week, um, you know, caring for ourselves and, and for, for others in the building. So, yes. I have a question. So when, do you see any trends with when they come in, like Mondays versus Fridays? Um, is there any, like, weather related? I mean, do you, do you, see, do you see any trends <laughs> weather related with, with what you're doing? <laughs> She come in on uh, <laughs> the Friday before me. Fri Friday, they're always happier than Mondays. <laughs> yes, right. Pretty much. It's, you know, yeah. it's it's that I think the whole the, the ebb and the flow of, of a school year and uh, you know the middle of March is tough. You know that's um, <laughs> you know it's a long stretch between February and April, and I think it's these types of initiatives that help keep us connected and, and grounded in the work that we, we're trying to do and. Um, you know, every little bit helps. I, I, I like to say, you know, many hands make like work, and if we're all working towards the same goal that week as a community, as a school, it it could just make things a little bit better. Kids, would you, would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. You probably all want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's excellent. Well, thank thank you very much. Uh, uh, if, oh, uh, Mr. Public. So I, I just have to say, I, I went to fourth grade at the Hood. And we won't hold that against you. I, <laughs> seeing this presentation, I kind of wish I'd gone to the bat. <laughs> um, this is an incredible presentation, incredible project. The kids all did fantastic. Thank you um, so much. And I think that this is just, uh, you know, I was a teacher for, for years, and, and the creativity it takes to put together a project like this that touches on so many different subjects and is interesting, clearly fun, and then to bring a civics component in where kids are coming in now, they're sharing it with the town. 
I, this, yep. It's just a, a stupendous job, and, uh, and really I think that all of the kids here did an incredible job. All of the teachers involved in this did an incredible job, Thank and uh, from the top bottom. Thank you. And I think Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Lindsay, I, I think I was, I saw this right at kind of the start of the project, and I said, oh, I know what we're doing for the school committee presentation, because <laughs> uh, I, I knew it would, would touch on, on all those, those different things, and the, the finished product is... Yeah. Is amazing, Mr. McGowan. I have one very important question. Is there any way we can remote in to see the Monday morning minute yeah. every week? Because yeah. I think we all could use uh, a little uh, that kind of uh, start to our I week. Think we can forward out that email next week to, uh, to the school committee. I think we can do that for you. All right. Thank you, guys. Mr. Dr. Daly. Just want to thank you, Mr. Maloney, for a great presentation. And the hood will be here next week, so we can. You are still welcome to join us. <laughs> I just, I just want to say how, how fantastic it was, how great it was to have a full room supporting all that we're doing. I think it was uh, the social emotional learning, I think it just speaks for itself how important that is and why we do this. And it was, it was amazing to hear that. And with the technology, this model that we built when we brought in all of our digital learning specials in each building, and, and Ms. Lindsay, I, I remember when, we, when I hired you, we said, you need to put yourself out of the job because you're going to keep working with the teachers to bring up their capacity in the classroom. But you're not out of the job because the technology is going to keep evolving. And this, this is so far beyond where we were when we brought you in a few years ago. Like it's just grown over the years, and it's just amazing. When I when I feel like these are things that I never ever could have learned. And when when I see elementary kids doing what we didn't do in high school when, when we started here, it's just amazing how it's how it's happening with our youngest learners. And I asked a lot of the students like, would you go into this as a field? And, this, this piques their interest, and it's so exciting. So thank you for sharing that tonight with all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wow. Yes, I'd, I'd like to publicly thank you all for your support in, in your time, in your service to, to us um, educators here in the district, to our students, to the community. Um, Mr. Papa Vasselio, thank you. I know this is your, your last meeting, um, and we appreciate that. And, Ms. Imbriano, we go back a long way. We were just catching up there a little bit. And remember our first meeting in the little shoebox yeah. in the old middle school. So thank you so very much, and um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Yeah, I was going to say, so while we have a crowd, we'll do this very quick. But I, I want to recognize a few people, not just here. First, Mr. Peter Kane who's the president of the NREA, and Shelley, who's the vice president, are here. Peter is stepping down as president after this year, and I see a number of teachers here. And I would just like to, while you are here today, just thank you for your time. Um, we are at opposite ends of the negotiating table at times, but I will just say for everything that happened through this pandemic, the school committee, the administration, the teachers union, the other unions worked very collaboratively to try to get the schools open as quickly as we can, as safe as we can. And so I just want, while you're here, I want to take the, a moment just to recognize both of you, but in particular, Mr. Kane, since we won't have him again. So thank you very much, Mr. Kane. And similarly, we're losing two of our committee members. So Chris, Papa, Papa Vas I'll never say your name right. <laughs> Mr. Melandy, just Papa Sol I know. Chris has been with us for three years, but I, I will only point out, you're only getting one of these, because he is still young. He might not be in town for a year or two, but he's going to be back, I bet, and he's going to be up here again at some point in the future. So I just want to thank you for your three years, and Janine, nine years, I mean, she's the only one on this committee that was here for the building project um, that was part of this. She hired two different superintendents, and so, you know, she has been my guidance and a lot of things because I have been here for six years or five years going on six years. And so, you know, she's been the senior member of the committee for the last few years. And so we've really appreciated your guidance. And I mean, it's been a pleasure serving with both of you. We've had a rough last three years and nine years has been a lot too. And I don't know. I just and, and served as the chair two or three years? Uh, two, two, yeah. two years. Chair, vice chair. Vice she's been chair. over a couple of yeah. years. A lot of different roles, so very much appreciate all of your work and thank you. a little gift for each of you, so thank you. I could as well. Just thank you both for, for so many years. So 
I, I think I might have known Chris first when he was working at the middle school when I was there as an assistant principal, and we got to know each other through a lot of great conversations, and, and I saw him bloom as an educator. I was excited to see when he ran for school committee. You've contributed so much to our schools in a short time. Both of you were on so many subcommittees together, so I feel like we did a lot of work together. Janine, we go back so far to the building project, walking in here with hard hats on and, and just all that work. And it has been said many times tonight, just the many, many hours, it's all volunteer, and you guys have given so much to our kids and to make this community what it is. So thank you so much for all you've done. Hi. Ann Lindell, my executive assistant, always picks out these nice gifts for everyone, and um, so Thank please you. enjoy. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Maloney, I'll just say your words about get out of the way and let them do their work. I would say that is a model of the school committee as well. Get out of the way, <laughs> let the administration and the teachers yes. and the educators do their work. So here, here. Uh, Mr. Boucle, if I may. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Chris. Yeah, we'll reset. Sorry, it's been three years. He still can't say my name. I know. Um, I just want, as people are leaving, I just want to say thank you for coming out tonight. Um, it's, it's, there's been a big uptick in town input over the last few months, but I want to say I appreciate the passion that people bring, people that uh, come and, and share their thoughts and their feelings. Um, there were a, a number of thoughtful comments made tonight, and I just want to point out something that struck me when hearing them, which is that I was, I was thrilled to hear people responding to what their kids were learning in schools. I think that's the foundation of having good buy-in from the community and being involved as parents. I think that's great. Uh, there was somebody that mentioned a book that they, they heard their child read and then read it and thought about it. And I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, it's, it's good to share these things with the town, but I think the most important step is something that Dr. Daly had, had brought up at really just very quickly, which is if you have thoughts about what's going on in the classroom, good, bad, or otherwise, bring them to your teacher and start that conversation first. I was a teacher for years and I would have been thrilled with any parent that came in and had critical thoughts about anything. Negative too. As a teacher you want to know those things because you don't always know how things are being connected by kids. Um, I think it's great that, that teachers bring in projects that stimulate thought. I don't want to see any of that change and, uh, and I think it's great that parents are passionate and want to have those conversations with their teachers. As long as we have those things going on I think we're going to have great education going on in this town. Well said. All right. We can take a quick break if people need to yeah. use the restroom and then come back and we will be voting a budget tonight so anybody that would like to stay is welcome to stay. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Move it. Move. No. Okay, moving on. So, nice job, Mr. Maloney and everybody else. Okay, so moving on. The first one we, the next thing we have is school choice, public hearing, and vote. So, do I have to open the public hearing? You do indeed. I will yes. open the public hearing. Well, you have to I have get a motion, motion to, to, to open it. I'm going to open it with a motion. <laughs> We'd like to make a motion to open the hearing. I move to open the hearing. A second. A second and Janine seconds. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You guys have to do every motion for the rest of the day. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. Dr. Daly, I turn it over to you. Sure. I share with you in your packet tonight information about school choice and guidance. Um, it's got updated details on some of the, the trends in our schools, the enrollment, um, and some of the information. There is a current uh, motion that we've used the past several years that's included here around school choice. And I don't know if there's any questions or if someone wants to make the motion. Um, sometimes I, if you don't mind, it, it's helpful to explain why we choose or choose not to, mm -hmm. um, just for the public to understand, if you sure. wouldn't mind explaining maybe. Sure. So it's really, it's really the, the, the design of the program and the current restraints under this current system um, fiscally. Mm -hmm with the, the budget challenges that we faced and the, the sizes are already borderline at the recommended levels to really not be able to um, support that additional um, choice at this time. Um, is it beneficial for us monetarily to take in a school choice? If so, um, or if not, could you explain that as well? So the, Michael, do you want to speak to the, the benefits monetarily? <laughs> yes. Uh, so, you know, so as the, the document kind of you know, speaks to, um, there, if you become a school choice district, um, yeah, every district essentially would receive 5000 per student that's opted to the, the choice program. Um, certainly in a situation that we've been faced where sort of, you know, this limited space to based on our enrollment guidelines that we had certainly at the elementary level where our current budget as uh, presented um, would, we're actually adding staff to be able to protect some, some class sizes and, and so forth and to stay within guidelines. So, uh, you know, certainly the, the current situation with our recent budget challenges not having additional funding to kind of fund all of our contingent plan this year. Um, it would certainly create some kind of fiscal constraints to, and additional funding challenges. And typically what happens is um, the district would kind of be infused with some, some revenue in the first year, and then that additional revenue would just be used to kind of offset additional staffing um, to fund the additional students that would be enrolled. And then the ideal situation is that the additional revenue would be to help you fund enhancements and enrichments of the based on the, the current constraints, certainly with our, our, red, our enrollment at the elementary level, we would really be looking at needing to use any additional revenue to fund additional staffing, and that, that would have been a challenge, certainly, in subsequent years. Um, so that's certainly one, one item to keep in mind. Um, certainly, you know, neighboring school systems that are also under some fiscal constraints in the area, they would be using Chapter, chapter 70 revenue based on the, the current people that would now be coming to the North Reading. So that, that could result in more districts looking at school choice program, which could have a subsequent future impact in, in North Reading's chapter 70 revenue. Um, so I think you know, currently North Reading Public Schools has two school choice students at other districts. Um, you know, both those students are attending um, you know, a virtual school, um, as you can see by the draft that was provided. Um, but I, I think the key thing is you always want to look at what the current challenges are and the fact that you know we've had uh, difficulty this past couple of budget years finding the additional revenue to fund our enhancements and we wouldn't want to put ourselves in a situation where we're just adding um, additional offset to, to just cover the, the class size guidelines that we're trying to get to every year. Thank you. That makes sense. Yeah. And I'll just add a couple quick things. I mean, especially at the elementary, they're 
you know, when we have, we see class sizes of 22, 23, like even adding a couple more in would really mean we would have to go to another teacher and there's space constraints also with it. And what is, Michael, you might know this off the top of your head, but you're saying if we get $5,000 for an incoming student, what's the average cost to educate a child per year right now in North Reading? So we're, my, we're certainly greater than that. We're um, looking at um, something closer to $16,000. Sixteen thousand. Yeah. Um, okay. I, I'd, yeah, I'd ahead, just like to Margot. discuss the motion. I, I'm in agreement with all that. Um, I, I would prefer that our motion um, that we vote on more clearly states what we just talked about, rather than what it, the, the motion that we've used in the past discusses more generally about the program itself. Um, uh, so I wonder if we can sort of workshop the, uh, a different motion. I'll entertain a motion from you, Mr. McGowan, and we'll see if we get a second on it. Okay. Um, so I was, I, was, I was sketching some notes <laughs> as we were talking. I don't know if I've caught everything, but um, so I would suggest something along the lines of I move that the um, uh, uh, committee vote to not participate in school choice because of the district's limited capacity to accept new students and maintain our class size goals. Now, there may be other reasons we want to add in there as well, but that's where I started. Okay. Any second on that? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. And then any abstention? It passes four to one. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I guess we need a motion to. We need a motion to. Exit the public exit. hearing. Ah, I move that we exit public hearing. Second. Okay. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. You know. <laughs> Passes four to one. Just on a streak. <laughs> okay. Seam fiscal year 23 budget. Dr. Daly, you included this in the packet. I did. I shared this in the next agenda item tonight as part of my role as being on the board for the SEAM Collaborative. One of our um, responsibilities is to inform our school committee about the fiscal year 23 budget. Um, I've shared with you some of the highlights around that budget. This um, organization is, is very well run by Executive Director Kathy Lawson. And the memberships are about 5500 a year that we pay. Um, we currently have two students in in that program. The way that SEAM um, helps to recognize its savings to us is they look at cost avoidance and we think about if those students were to a, a private program, not through a SEAM collaborative, we'd be talking about um, a cost of about $72,000. So that membership plus the savings with the, um, that, we, that we incur um, because of being members saves us quite a bit. It's a great program, as I've spoken many times, in addition to their programs that they have, we, we have many different um, opportunities through SEAM, job-like programs. Um, we, we do a lot of curriculum work together. We've come together to join um, forces to hire our UDL coordinator as well as our DEI coordinator. Um, and so I don't know if there are any questions about, about SEAM or about the SEAM budget for 2023. My, my only comment, I, didn't, I did not print out the whole packet, but if I recall, I mean, for two students, we're talking about 190,000, was it? For two students, just to give it, I mean, again, just to, just to talk about the high cost of special education. And so- um, The cost of when, to, be, to put them out. Yeah, to, yeah. Put, to put two students in, in there. And so, I mean, it's great that we have this because it's still saving, you know, $70,000 on it, but it's, um, yeah, it's great that we have it. Um, everything looked good in the budget. It was a modest increase and I, I saw no issue with it, so. Any other comments on the scene? Okay, you wanna talk about Northeast, Dr. Daly? Sure, so North Shore Education. Or North Shore, North Shore. Yeah, no problem. There's a lot of uh, acronyms. A um, little, bit, little bit different um, scenario. We have three students that attend this program. Uh, they, they give your cost savings a little bit differently, but they think about um, you know, the difference between if we were members versus non-members. Um, so our membership dues is around $10,000. Um, the cost savings really comes to, to about um, $8,964 per student that we're saving um, as members versus non-members. And for the three students, it comes to $26,892. Right. 
my only question on this one was, <clears throat> if I recall, they ran a million dollar deficit last year. Yeah. And so there's a there's a higher than normal um, increase for this year. I'm just I'm just curious how, how how they run a deficit when, I mean, what contributed to the deficit to yeah. me? Because a million dollar deficit is a is pretty yeah, well. We've <laughs> we've watched this very carefully. We spent a lot of time at the, at the meetings going over this. It was not a. a a mistake. It was very purposely driven by COVID. So they did not want to increase fees during a time when people had a lot of um, a lot of difficulties financially. A lot of the districts that they're working with especially were hit harder, even harder than North Reading. Um, and so they did not want to introduce that. So that's why we were able to do, we came up with a solution this year with some additional uh, membership dues to offset that for one year. Um, I think we all agree that if, if we're talking about this happening in the future, it's a very different conversation. But this was really a one-time bridge to get through um, some of the difficulties that COVID presented. The collaborators also don't have the same opportunity for the ESSER funds that, that the districts do. And so the state worked with us to say that this is a way to help to support um, the collaboratives. And so that's really what that is for just for this year. But it, and, and, and so will that, will that higher than normal increase just take care of the previous deficit and then we anticipate going forward it would be a more moderate increase exactly there'll, there'll be a more moderate increase I mean one of the solutions was to just have a really high increase for next year and they didn't want to do that either obviously so this was the solution we came up with and again the benefits of being a member and for all member districts to help uh, contribute to that um, was the solution we agreed upon as a board so. I mean I support the decision it's just I don't, I've looked at these for a few years. I don't think I ever saw a million dollar deficit no, in, no. in a year. So. It's very, very unusual. Yep. Anybody else have any comments, thoughts, questions? Okay. Moving on. Mr. Connolly has joined us for the uh, school budget vote. Yeah. Mr. Connolly, would yes. you like to? I'm, I'm curious what you're presenting here, too. <laughs> <because> <laughs> I have a I have, I'm actually made, as of like 4th o'clock today, I had. All right. updates. Okay. I was kind of running around this afternoon. Did you get the, from the soccer field? You, you did you get uh, did you get the thirty thousand dollar update so too? I have okay. Presentation that's, I've been updated okay. handouts that's different than what's in your. Is there anything you put up here? Or? Okay. Yeah, I have it. I have it in there. <coughs> Just give me. Uh, Out off the presses, everyone. I know this is some class. Man. I was able to do it uh, right before that's the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> you pass this out. Okay. Bring it up there, maybe. I'll go <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. So here's the updated packet, and then yeah. You're like really testing my eyes, aren't you? <coughs> yeah, I'm going to put it on screen, though. So. I'll go up there. Does everyone have this, too? No, I need, you need this, too. Actually, no. I'm going to go right here. How about that? There should be two handouts. Can you go sit up there? Uh, you, can, you can go sit up there. <laughs> two handouts. I'll do, thank you. So there's three or two <coughs> handouts. Yeah, so I only have a little. Pretty sure I was able to like just up there. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so sort of hot off the presses. This has been as every as, as the process that we've become very used to in in North Reading is, is this is a process that remains very fluid, as you can see. So the numbers um, change frequently, and that's because you get, always get updated information as you move through the process. Um, something like additional state state revenue just came through within the last. A uh, week or so, the, the House budget um, was a little bit greater in Chapter 70 revenue than, than the governor's budget. So that's an update that we make to the revenue plan, and that netted to some additional revenue. Um, there's always some information as you receive it, as you move through the process on some fixed costs. Could be benefit related. It could be other, other type of a, of a fixed cost related in terms of our assessment costs and retirement costs and so forth. So then. It's a relative fluid process, but I think at this point where um, the administration through the school committee is prepared to make a recommendation um, based on what we believe will be the final revenue plan um, for, the, for the town for municipal and school budgets. Um, 
So just to take a quick look back, um, our FY22 budget appropriation, you can see um, what that number looks like, 34276665 The original recommended budget that was presented in early March, talked about at the public hearing on April 11th, um, was 36 million. Seventy-seven thousand one hundred sixty-nine. That was a five point three percent, or a little more than a one point eight million dollar increase. Um, the budget that we are prepared to offer tonight, hot off the presses, even changed as as early as late as like almost three three o'clock today, is thirty-five million seven hundred nine three thirty, and that is thirty thousand dollars greater than what was in the packet from what was known on Friday, um, and that would be a four point two percent increase over fiscal year 22. So the difference be of what our original request was and what the request that we're prepared to make this evening to the school committee for a vote um, is $367,839 different um, than our original recommendation, but it would be a balanced, a balanced budget. Um, yes? The, the, the 35709000 million, that, does that include the one-time funds, the two, that's now 235? It does. Okay. Yeah, that includes everything. I got it. Okay. Um, so how do we get to the 367, um, 839 of reductions from the original request? Uh, this was presented at the public hearing. It's really not significantly different. Um, at the public hearing, the number was a little bit greater. We were trying to get to, I think, 419,000 or something a little bit greater. So we did find some additional funding through, mainly through some state revenue, uh, local, you know, chapter 70 and, and some fixed cost changes. Um, but that's a good thing. So this, so there are some slight changes. So the first two line items was talked about in detail at the public hearing. Those are just kind of line item, um, you know, allocation adjustments based on information that became more known as we move through the budget process. We now know we only need one kindergarten uh, midday run, not three. So we were able to make that adjustment um, we have some additional money and some grants so we were able to make an adjustment there with our contracted services line no impact on really any any services it's just a reallocation of where the where it's being funded from general fund to to some federal grant money that's available uh, next year and then these other items were next five items were all new requests that we were requesting these are positions we don't have currently they're all new positions that are, were in our strategic plan that we were hoping to fund. Um, and you may recall, if you were here at the April 11th hearing, is we felt, although it was difficult to, to not fund anything new or anything uh, part of our new initiatives as our strategic plan, we did feel like we didn't want to go back and reduce, certainly reduce anything that we currently have to fund something new in the fact that we were achieving some of this through SR and that S, those those positions are continuing next year for social and emotional um, adjustment counselors and, and academic interventionist tutoring and so forth. We felt like you know this was the, the fiscally sound decision. Um, and I think what we're prepared to sort of look at today is, is that we actually do feel like we could, with the additional revenue, fund that that um, shared school adjustment counselor. So it's really that the last, and I was really rushing through this at the end, so like some of these FTE, that last position that's highlighted in green there, um, originally that was a reduction of 72,000. It now only needs to be 10,000. So we actually feel like we can fund this position. That was the highest priority position that was identified. Um, so we actually feel like we could add this, this position in at the, um, Previously, it was a 0.5, but with the additional 30,000, that now should say it's now a 1.0 that we can add uh, into, into the budget and really fund the, the highest priority of the NRPS 2025 new positions. And that is a school adjustment counselor that would be really focused at the elementary level um, for, for next year. Um, so that $10,000, we felt, we feel like we can kind of capture within the personnel um, you know, budget through attrition and other other savings that we anticipate we'll have. Um, that's a line item that we can we can safe number we can safely get to to, to kind of balance. Um, so, where are we at then? I think certainly we have a budget that would meet our contractual obligations with our employees and employee unions. Um, 
It certainly allows us to meet our fixed operational cost increases that we have every year with busing, utility costs, other maintenance costs. And then it does maintain and now add some staff to certainly um, maintain educationally sound teacher and student ratios. We did add staffing at the elementary level, mainly in the kindergarten program, to maintain those class sizes that we strive to at the elementary level between 18 and 22 students. And it does allow for continuation of academic support systems in areas of learning loss. Those academic interventionists that we currently have that are funded through NSR grant will continue to be there. They're tutors, so there'll be support at the elementary level. Um, we'll certainly maintain the, the, the school nursing staffing that we have, um, partially through our general fund and now through SR uh, for another year. Um, the SR is the COVID kind of emergency relief funding gr federal grant that we have through fiscal 24. Um, and certainly it continues to address social, emotional, and mental health needs. And now we're doing that at even a greater level by adding that position. So it's a little bit more enhanced than, than what um, we previously would have had through a level services budget. And then we're maintaining our technology support staffing. We're maintaining our, our infrastructure, our one-to-one -one student and device environment that we have. And we certainly have um, a budget that meets our operational costs that we feel is appropriately funded that will allow us to maintain our five schools and campuses. So and that, that's kind of what the budget is, is adopting. And we're very pleased that through a lot of efforts by uh, town officials, town administrator, town finance director, finance committee, chairs and vice chairs that sit on the finance planning team that really um, certainly through the chair and vice chair with um, Mr. McGowan and Mr. Buckley that have really worked hard to identify the additional funding. Um, although it's not all of what we originally were asking for, um, we're used to not um, having to make some, some decisions off what the original request um, has been. That's a process that we're used to going through um, over a number of years. We do, we, we are now able to fund the highest of priority of, of, of new positions. And that's that school adjustment counselor um, at the elementary level. So that's, that's a, certainly a positive thing that's happened over the last two weeks. Um, so this would be the motion that we'd ask for tonight. Um, you know, this budget is, would be a budget of $35,709,330. It does represent an increase of 4.2%. Um, or $1,432,665 over fiscal year 22. Um, questions, yeah, please. So a couple comments and then one question. So uh, on the comments, just so the committee understands, the extra 62,000, just to call it out, 32,000 was adjustments to the revenue plan, um, as Mr. Connolly said, and the other 30,000 was an increase of the one-time expenses that are being funded. Yeah. Actually, I think some of mine actually finally got through. So. They did, yeah. Um, and you kept talking about them, and eventually it looked People give up eventually, so. Um, so, yeah, so, so again, it's, it's 235000 of one-time expenses being paid, not to mention snow and ice and retirements, things above the line as well. So this is still a, a concerning way to balance a budget, but we have the need, so we have to do it that way. Um, but can you speak a little bit? because I know usually when you do the whole presentation, it's up there, but compared to previous years, where does 4.2% you know, so sort four, of come in? So It's on the higher end, isn't it? It is on the higher end. So the 10-year average, and it was a, um, I've shown a table, yeah. is about 3.7%, 3.65%. Um, last year, we kind of, we actually funded a budget of about 5.2%, so yeah. it's a little bit lower than last year. Um, the years historically before that, we were, we got, we were at 3.8% for, for a couple of years, then we were around 4% previously. I think one, one year, um, about four years ago, we were as low as 2.8%, and we made that work with a lot of one time and some offsets mm -hmm. that we had at the time. But, so it's a little bit higher than what's been the 10-year average by about a half a percent, okay. it's fair to say. And, and, and I'll just say that, you know, normally we in the town or the municip municipal side are on the same pace. We're a little bit ahead because they haven't done that yet, but we were told these are the final revenue numbers. And so just put an asterisk by that just in case anything happens, because they're, they're usually when we come to a vote, both sides are balanced. They're not balanced yet. So this is our balance, but you know, we've 
there's no truth to the rumors that we've all watched the candidate nights and we want to vote this before we get anybody else on here, but um, we're actually, <coughs> no, but for, for hiring purposes, we really do have to get something done because if we're adding some of those positions, we have to start posting those a month ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Good job. No, that's, that's Thank you, Michael, for... No. <coughs> It's funny, for finance planning, they, like, literally the night before finance, we have finance planning at 8 in the morning, the night before they send out something, and we come in and Michael's already adjusted all the, all the documents for huh. the meeting. So thank you, Mr. Connolly. No, no problem. Okay. I'll leave Mr. it. I move that the school committee approve and hereby adopt the final FY23 school operating budget of $35,709,330. <laughs> This represents the increase of 4.2% or 1,432,665 over FY22. I second. Okay. Any questions? Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. I want you Thank to say you. that number. No, no. I want you to say that number, Janine. It's fun to wrap up another budget year. <laughs> Um, yes, anybody can make those. I, like I don't know why. Is that no, good I news? Do. So yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Buckley, if I could just thank you know, all of you uh, for, for working on this budget. I think, as you mentioned, 4.2. Yes. Um, it didn't get everything, but it is it is generous. And it is very good. In our yep. Working with the town has been has been excellent as always. It's a, it's a great collaborative process. And Michael, again, for pulling this all together this afternoon uh, is, is fantastic. So thank you for everything being up to date. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Would, would you and thank you, Dr. Daly, as well, for <laughs> all of this. I probably should have let Detective Lucci go a while ago, but there's some questionable people in the audience still, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep him. I feel, I feel better with Mr. Friedman looking at me here with <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, routine matters. We have some minutes. Oh, Mrs. Imbriano, did you lead this us? This is the last, the last hurrah. I know. It is. Yeah. Who's going to actually read the minutes from now on? Be <laughs> you. <laughs> Somebody that gets elected is reading the minutes. So. There you go. <laughs> you don't. I would like to make a motion to accept the March 28th, 2022 open session minutes as written. Second. Any comment? Any issues? I saw none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion to accept the March 28th, 2022 executive session minutes as written. Second. Again, any discussion? Changes? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. And I would like okay. to make a motion to accept the April 11th, 2022 open session and public Budget hearing minutes as written. Second. Any issues here? Discussion? Not that I saw. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. I want to dissent on those ones. <laughs> <laughs> budget update, Mr. Connolly. Just look no one. There's no budget update this evening. Okay, staffing. Uh, None? No Isn't? budget update at this time. Okay. Sorry, no staffing update. There you go. I, I do have uh, something I'll mention in my administrative report. Okay. Is in donations? I think we have one. I move that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude various donations in the amount of $170 from North Reading parents to benefit the track and field program at the high school. Second. Any discussion? I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Moving on. Subcommittee updates. Finance planning team. Mr. McGowan, anything to note? We found a little bit more money, and we spent it quickly. <laughs> Excellent summary. Just like my kids. I won't even say anything more. Athletic <laughs> subcommittee. This is Embryonum, Mrs. Batwell. We had a meeting. Yep. <laughs> and we both. And, uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, gosh. Sounds like um, that's when we uh, stare at Dr. Daly. Yeah, yeah we discussed, so please help us out because yep, sure. I left my meet, um, things. We discussed many things. We discussed the, the sign that's going in down at the field. Yep. Uh, we discussed uh, progress on the scoreboard. Uh, we just we had an update on, on spring sports. We talked a little bit about some of the, um, the, the pricing for trying to do some updates to um, Cary Park as well. 
Um, and we talked a little bit about storage. Um, you know, we're looking at some different storage <coughs> solutions for outside that would involve support for tennis, but also for uh, performing arts. So we are working with our, our butters and neighbors to try to make this, um, you know, it's, we need storage and we also want to be mindful of our neighbors. And so we are going to work with those folks and continue to explore that from an aesthetic pr uh, yeah. point of view from an aesthetic point of view yeah and so um Fair enough. you know we do have a walk through we're going to be very uh very conscientious of, of of all of that to make sure that we can meet um the needs you know we have a lot of ideas to make it uh fit in smoothly so um we're, we're gonna we're planning that for later this week Michael, anything else at Athletic Subcommittee that rings a bell? I think that I can check. Yeah, the, uh, I think that, I think that, was I think that captures it. Yeah, you know, we're hoping um, to those couple of projects, obviously stadium and some Cary Park work that we're looking to do a combination of potentially some state state funding, state AMR grants with um, some donations that we can hope make a reality this coming summer and fall. But we're just continuing to, to work on those. So. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, in terms of upcoming schedule, Athletic Subcommittee scheduled to meet on May 18th, 2022 at 12 p.m. Fine Arts Subcommittee scheduled at May 25th at 3.15 p.m. I don't remember what fine pl finance planning is, but we have that. Um, administrative report, Dr. Daly. I just wanted to share, this is a bit of a staffing update, but and I think maybe at an upcoming meeting I may bring um, the first uh, new member of our administrative team um, since I've been the superintendent, I believe, unless I'm misspeaking. But um, I have promoted several people from within, but Mr. LePret led a search um, for um, an assistant principal. So, of course, I want to extend our appreciation to Mr. Hain, who's done a fantastic job here. So we'll have him uh, come to an upcoming meeting as well. Um, but Mr. LePret uh, hired Miss Barryanne Alonzo. Um, she is going to be the new assistant principal at North Reading High School. She comes to us from um, Lawrence. She has a great background in, she's a world language teacher, um, and she's just so excited. It was one of, the, one of the best days I've had in a while was meeting with her, interviewing her. It's sort of a, you know, a, Mr. LePret makes the decision, but then we have a, a conversation uh, and, and, and talk about um, you know why she wants to work here and just hearing from her all the positives about our district what what brought her here and for me to be able to share with her all the positives about being here was just it was a great day um, that we had last week so I'm really excited to introduce her so I will have her uh, I, I thought it'd be appropriate to have her come to a, an upcoming meeting just to introduce her a little bit to to everyone so wonderful um, I'm wondering can we bring in notorious to recognize them at an upcoming meeting as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. I would be more than happy to. I think yeah. that'd be that'd be excellent. I, I, as some of you know, I had the pleasure of uh, getting to see them perform. It was an yeah. experience um, that like I will never so forget. Fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> they were they were unbelievable. Um, mm -hmm. It was it was so close. I mean they they stole the show. <laughs> they when they when the when the MCs came back on the stage, they said um, that the MCs were like, "I'm feeling chills right now." That's how they felt. I mean it was. It was electrifying. It was it was it was excellent. So I was so happy to uh, to see him. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, um, it would be wonderful to yeah. see them. So we'll, we'll, we can't we'll have see. every we can't have everybody every time. But I, I would think you know you know athletic teams that win mm, big titles. I mean yeah. notorious like you know bands winning big competitions. Yeah. I think it'd be nice to recognize them. And again, I don't think it has to be every week, but yeah. you know third place in. In a national oh, but an, in an international competition, I think yeah. it definitely yeah. deserves recognition. We so. can certainly do that. I can I can ask them to, and I know how busy they are, so we will do our best it's, to bring them can. in. I um, it's funny for me. Like I want to, I don't, I never want to steal their thunder. So even I'm sitting there, I'm like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to share out. I don't want to tweet out that they came in third. Like yeah. I want them to get to share. I was it. waiting for the um, word too. I know, <laughs> I know. Other people, but, social um, media, yeah. super exciting. So. Are we speaking of that? I know there was a lot of fundraising. Uh, is, does some of that come across? like on the bids and donations um or is it if it's on a fundraiser site that's all separate right yeah it's separate michael if you sorry no. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. just just want to clarify so the, separate the, the sh yeah. yeah the question is about the um and i'm forgetting the name of it now the share right um snap snap raise snap. so snap raise is completely outside of the schools mm -hmm. and is not something that we are um it won't come in through right? bids and donations or we have to so, them no, so what happens is if, if there's, um, so 
So most of the times during, during a snap raise, a sort of a booster organization sort of hosts that snap raise. Sure. Um, if not, if we've sort of endorsed it or, or supported it, and it's a snap raise for one of our athletic programs or extracurricular performing arts programs, once that fundraiser is complete, so it's pre-approved through principal office, my office, um, once that is completed and the, and the check is, is sent, yeah. it, would appear, they would, it would appear as a donation that was accepted. That's what we've been doing. So that, so it could, that actually takes might a little see. while to play itself out, yeah. okay. but it does, we do accept it. Okay, so they might see that as a as a donation coming from your office. For that, yes. And I just mentioned it because I know that a lot of people d donated, and uh, it yeah. was uh, yes. Once again, the community stepped up and and uh, helped, yes, and helped did. Them a lot. Yeah. So we would see it, and then um, and let, the only thing that we may not see is if it was the booster organization was hosting it, and there would be a check that would go to the boosters, and then they might Fair eventually enough. gift it back to us in another way that but it was you see it as a booster donation as yeah. a booster donation or a booster in kind for something <clears throat> yep it would go that way okay okay any other administrative report uh none at this time okay correspondence uh none at this time so just just quickly for the committee do we should we do the same thing we did this week next week for like the hood ask them to maybe come at seven o'clock line up in the cafeteria and then for the 16th yeah, for, sorry, for two weeks from now, the next time the hood's here, have them, you know, go to the cafeteria. We do public comment for a half hour at least, and if we need to cut it off, we cut it off for them to come in, and then we can open it up again. Do, do you think that went well? I think so. I thought it was a very wise. Yeah, I thought it was a fair balance. Other people, yes. I'd also okay. like to, I also wonder if we shouldn't, we can talk about the best way to set it up, but if we shouldn't seed the whole state, do it like we did for Mr. Connolly and just sit over there for the presentation. So it sort of depends on what everyone's doing, but um, it might make it a little more friendly for everyone else in the audience as the kids are facing them. And so we should. You're, you're yeah. right, but they were really using this. But they were using resource, that, so it's. it's and yeah. I wouldn't want them to feel thrown off a little bit yep. by a change. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard tricky. balance. Next year, we. Most likely, we'll return to going to the schools. Um, it's, sure. it's one of our pieces, and it's been, you know, <clears throat> tricky logistically with that number <laughs> trying to be in this room. Yep. Yeah. So there were some things I liked better tonight. Some things I like better. It's it's hard. I, I, um, I think it's nice to play to the audience, but also they're here to teach you. And yeah. Yep. And the you, interactive part was the best part. I think when we were all up out of our seats and moving around. Yeah. So. And it might be easier too, from a public speaking standpoint, yeah. to be viewing. A small group of people, as opposed <laughs> to, to a, a all the all the family. Yep. Yeah. Mrs. Cloney, you had a thought. I just, I, I'm wondering if we have to do the public comment first, just if there's reason we can't let the. I realize that potentially that there might be people who have not nice things to say, but um, we, I don't know, if we've experienced in any of the meetings that I've been here that they haven't kept their comments till. Do you know what I mean? We haven't tried yeah. it that way, and I'm just thinking yeah. having the kids go yeah. first. <laughs> Because I also think it's kind of awkward for the kids when um, people leave before their presentation. I think sure. that that's kind of sad for the kids. Could I? I don't know yeah. Really well, I mean, I, I, I could address it or you could address it. I, I mean, I'll give you my thoughts, but you want to start. Go, for, you go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, again, we, we've thought about it before, and some committees do that. I think that historically there are people that come that have a quick comment and want to make it. And I feel like it's disrespectful to say somebody has to wait for a three hour meeting to make your three minute comment and I understand that right now I may not personally agree with a lot of the comments that are coming but at the same time I agree with the right for them to have an opinion and, and, and voice it and so I worry about hiding it at the end of the meeting because I mean I remember years ago I came to a meeting and asked a question early on and you know and, and similarly if somebody wants to be disruptive and they choose to come and make their comment and leave Personally, sometimes I would rather them leave rather than feel they have to stay here and be part of those presentations. Um, so again, we can do whatever we want. We have to. We and we saw. Yes. And we saw in the last meeting that um, there were people. Uh, these, this was online, but they were not being respectful of of the students as they were going through their presentation. So yeah. I I would and I'd. You can't assume any whoever's here for public comment what they're going to say, but you know I, yeah. I'd rather yeah. have that get done. Or, or even when like Mr. Simons came last week and wanted to say something nice to Mrs. Briano, Mr. Kane had come if he wanted to speak about you know not you know about, about not being the president going forward. Again, I mean there's a balancing act, and so I appreciate that there's 
one way of doing it. And and that's why I think the nice, I, I felt like the balance would be we do a half hour so somebody does have a quick comment and wants to leave, they can, but we don't keep the students too late because for years the school committee began at seven o'clock. We moved it up a little bit, but I feel like if we get them right in at seven o'clock, so at least they're not waiting till 7.30, 8 o'clock, they're not being, Again, I, I, I thought that that went pretty well, which is why I was asking the others. No, go ahead, Ms. Glenn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Do you want to say where I live? Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Um, no, I mean, I, first of all, I'm not advocating for waiting until yeah. the very end of the meeting. I guess what I'm just wondering is I think that, you know, there are other people in the space during that, um, and I, that come just to see the kids. Mm -hmm. And I think, one, you're excluding a lot of parents from being able to be in here for public comment because they're now in the hallway waiting with their kids like all those parents didn't have the option i'm assuming that we didn't give them all the options well they, oh, the doing. parents all had the option to come yeah they could have come. Okay. they, they could have right. the yeah. kids were the kids were were being yeah. everybody the had the there were adults yeah. in the room just, with them yeah. yeah it was just suggested that they stay in there yeah it was up to them but, if they were. but i guess yeah. my other thing just is that i think that you know i, I feel like we need to find a balance to that like the stuff that's being said isn't just harmful to the kids it's like not great and so i feel like giving them the I, I i don't have a problem with making it a little bit harder to say not nice things i'm not saying we have to make it <laughs> as difficult as humanly possible no. but i just think that there just might be an opportunity to have the kids go first and have that piece happen and um and then let people yeah. I mean, and again i don't think there's a right or wrong answer here but i would say that there were parents coming before arguing for mask mandates. There were parents coming before arguing against masks. There were parents coming before about other issues over past years. And I just think if we say, we don't like this messaging, we're gonna move it this way. I hear the, we don't want it in front of the students. And so, and I also hear the, we don't want students to stay up late because somebody's, you know, reading their fourth graders books and having trouble understanding them. But um, we just, Again, I, I think we just have to, we have to balance it. And I don't think there's an answer here. We can keep talking about it. And as a committee, we can decide sort of how to do it. I mean, I think a lot of the public comment sort of does fall on the chair to decide what he or she likes to do. But I think ultimately, I personally like the balance today because I didn't feel, I didn't feel uncomfortable with students being here. We didn't keep them too late. And there will be people that come that are not just trying to talk about their theory and curriculum. There will be people that come to the meeting and ask, like we had a student you know, a few months ago that talked about midterms. And I wouldn't want to tell a student that you have to wait however long. Like I just, again, we're always trying to prioritize who gets in and who gets out because nobody wants to hear us the whole, the whole meeting. And so I thought it was a decent balancing act today, having them show up and then come in and I don't know. But again, we can always look at it more, but we'll see. Dr. Daly. A couple of brief comments in. I do think it worked well tonight. I, I'm almost positive that the hood is going to be completely virtual. Okay. So the, it, it may be a moot point in terms of the that piece of it. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll be, uh, if you remember how Dr. McKee did it last year, was sort of live from their building, yep. um, which will also make it easier with the, uh, you know, just to, for those at home, we apologize for the technical difficulty when you're playing a video in here and trying to transmit, that's what didn't work. So we mm -hmm. were able to, provide the audio except when they're playing a video. Um, it's because we can't mute this uh, <coughs> machine. So we'll continue to work on that, but it's it's really not designed to be going home and in person and, you know, so no. when we play our videos through the virtual, it'll work, we'll be able to hear it, they'll be able to hear it as well. And I just wanted to take one moment just to say, to clarify too, um, the, you know, I think I speak for myself and I'm sure members of this committee that we, very much support our law enforcement and working with um, all of those messages. We're not we're not submitting to any kind of a messaging that's anti uh, police, anti authority. If there are books or titles that have questions that raise questions that that talk about topical discussions, I think as Chris said, I think it's a great thing to talk with your children about them, to talk with the teacher about them as well. Um, but I, I just wanted to be very clear that as a school system, we're very supportive of of our law enforcement. So. Yeah, and, and and I would say the same thing about the thing that was handed to us, which I haven't read, and I will look it over, but I think, again, I would refer to you, to teachers. I mean, I'm not going to get into a discussion about what a, what a teacher should or should not teach in a classroom, because that's not their role. And 
I'd yeah, be happy yeah. to look it over. Mr. Clean and I could look at it. But, yeah. but honestly, the first thing I would want to do is go back to the teacher, understand right. the context, and, and question, you know, how it all, this it all come up there. with the teachers. And there's also, just to note, there's a difference between the school adopting a set of curriculum standards that then all teachers have to put in and the fact that sometimes teachers will teach things that they yeah. turn into relevant learning things. Right. So there's a big difference between a teacher did X versus the school does Y. Right. Part of what I'm going to share at the, at the forum that's upcoming is we don't have a curriculum that is a manual that someone <coughs> stands and reads and this is the curriculum and this is what we need to get rid of. That's not how it works. Right? We have curriculum frameworks and the teachers use their expertise to design lessons and units working collaboratively and individually on, on lesson plans. Um, and so that's why that's how it works. It's not we don't have a curriculum that comes down from above that we can just get rid of. That's not how it works. That's not good teaching. That is something I would never support. So and, I and, I, and I also point out that for the forum, when I looked at it, the forum is for people who actually have students in the school district. That is the the, the intention is really for North Reading families um, of with people in the schools. I think I left it, and when I send out a reminder, if someone wants to attend who does not, they should just reach out to me. And I can make a, a conversation to hear from some people um, that may have a question. I understand why someone, you know, looking to come into our schools might have a question as well. Um, but a lot of this is about capacity. And it's about, you know, again, this is not a public meeting. This is a meeting that I'm holding. Um, and it's going to follow the rules and the norms that I set in my meeting. Correct. Yes. I mean, I think that's an important note just because some of the comments are from people who don't even have students in the schools that might live here still. But. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. Future business. We have a meeting next Monday. This will be a quick meeting. Um, Mr. McGowan, I don't want to put you on the spot. Do you know if you're going to be able to attend or not? Or you know, it sort of depends. You don't have to. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay. To be uh, determined. But we can. I think we should at least organize chair, vice chair, secretary, um, liaison. Um, we don't have to do subcommittees. We can. If you're not going to be in attendance or you want to, you know, be in for five minutes. We won't. We don't have to do that part of it. We can do the sub. We can do the subcommittee assignments at the following meeting. I I'll defer to you on that. I, you know, can certainly. <coughs> the only danger is if I'm not there, I get assigned that's, to all. That's that's always the danger if you don't show up to a meeting. <laughs> and so. Give them all the, yeah, we all the tough ones. <laughs> but uh, I trust you guys. I don't. I don't know about you guys, but uh, <laughs> uh, don't 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 know you guys well enough. But. Over here, so. <laughs> We've got um, you back. <laughs> okay, so we can, we, we, again, we can, we can kind of decide what we do then, but. Yeah, um, I mean, I certainly, I, I guess my only thought about that is given the sort of last minute nature, even though it's in our policy book, uh, yeah. probably limit the business as much as possible. Oh, we're not, I don't think we're going to do anything. That, and that's the only business, business yet. Yeah, no, there right. won't be public comment at that one. There won't, I mean, we don't have to have public comment at every meeting. Um, we don't have to public comment at every a, meeting. It's, yeah. it's strongly encouraged by the state, but it's not actually required, so. Yep. This will just be a quick, I mean, the select board reorganizes on Wednesday, um, but we get- And there are reasons, and there are, there, there are reasons why we need to get it done too. Right. Not just our policy, but that you, you need to, there's things that the, the chair going forward needs to take care of. Correct. Um, so May 9th, 6.30, I guess, are we doing it in here? Are we doing it in the, your, the superintendent? Where did you post it for? Did you post it yet? We not? haven't posted it yet. So I do a superintendent's okay. conference room? That's fine. Yeah, we okay. can do that. So we can do that superintendent's Remember conference room. randomly showed up earlier in the week. <laughs> that's, that's my comment. <laughs> um, okay, and then the next other, the next meeting after that will be May 16th at 6.30 p.m. and the Hood School presentation and CPAC presentation. I'm very sad to lose Janine and Chris on this committee. You have both done excellent work. I would encourage you both to stay involved in the community. I have been I have been behind the scenes volunteering you for different things. Some people, some people have already been reached out to about some of those. Some of those. So maybe we'll see some of them still stay involved in other areas. But um, I don't know. We'll miss you. Yes, so. yeah, we will. You certainly will. Thank you so much for your service. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. And I will second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Uh, <laughs> passes four to one. <laughs> Only three people made that joke. We'd be in real trouble. I know. <laughs> <laughs>